When the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 launched last year, it was one of the most performant GPUs we had ever seen. I'm currently in the process of choosing new hardware for our GPU test bench, and I thought it'd be an interesting time to give this test bench one final run before I change it all and while it's in its current state, I wanted to compare the performance from when the 4090 launched with our historical benchmarks to now on the same test bench almost a year later. Sometimes GPUs will age like fine wine, sometimes they don't. Let's see what the story is. As far as testing the RTX 4090 Founders Edition, we're using the exact same test bench, like, I mean, to the T, nothing's changed. The same exact 4090 Founders Edition as well, and it's running the Intel Core i9-12900K. The benchmarks shown here are the usual ones that we run on GPUs, which will be getting updated once we switch out this hardware as well. But before you say something like, why didn't we use a faster CPU? Well, the point of this video is to show a direct comparison between what we tested when this launched and now. This is also to see what differences game versions and drivers can make over time. We're also including historical results from other GPUs for a little bit of comparison as well, just to give you a bit more data. Typically, we use testing that's repeatable and standardized and not gameplay testing because those results can't be repeated and there's too many variables and ultimately they can be quite unreliable. We're changing one small detail with this video though. When I started retesting, Cyberpunk 2077 V2 wasn't out yet, but I did test it with 2.0, so we're also using the current driver for all of that at the time of filming, which is today, which is the 21st of September 2023, and I'll be showing all the Cyberpunk results in its own section because there's lots to go through, but let's kick it off with 1080p benchmarks in Windows. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, in Windows at 1080p, we see the RTX 4090 Founders Edition only pick up a single frame of performance, so nothing interesting to see here. With Superposition at 1080p Extreme, we see a slightly different result here, with the RTX 4090 Founders Edition picking up four frames per second on average. Remember, this test for Superposition at 1080p is super GPU bound. Finally, onto Horizon Zero Dawn at 1080p in Windows, we see quite a bit of difference in performance. As you're about to see, this is a bit of a trend with Horizon Zero Dawn across all resolutions. This is typically what we see with this test all the time, so yeah, interesting one to do. Onto 1080p benchmarks in Linux, this one's changed a little bit. We will most likely be switching to Fedora 38 for Linux testing going forward. So that's what we use for the retesting here for a bit of context. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p in Linux, we picked up a bit of performance here. We picked up an average of four frames per second. With Superposition, we're seeing something pretty similar with it picking up around six frames per second on average at 1080p Extreme in Linux. Finally, in Horizon Zero Dawn, we also run this with Proton, just so it runs. The jump in performance is huge, and we picked up about 24 frames per second on average. That's a big, big difference. All right, let's move on to 1440p benchmarks in Windows. We ran the same tests again, just for context. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1440p, nothing too exciting here. We only picked up a single frame per second in performance on average. This is within a margin of error, so I would say that this is not any gain or loss in performance. With Superposition at 1440p, we run this benchmark with no depth of field and motion blur turned off. We see the same thing with only picking up an extra frame in performance on average which is also within a margin of error, so you can call that a win or a loss, completely up to you. Lastly, onto Horizon Zero Dawn at 1440p, we're seeing what we saw at 1080p. We actually lost quite a bit of performance here. We lost around 25 frames per second on average. That's the thing with Horizon Zero Dawn, it always exposes these kinds of differences. It's actually why we use this benchmark. Let's move on to 1440p benchmarks in Linux, and we ran the same tests again. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1440p, we lose about three frames per second on average, which I thought was a little bit surprising, but it is what it is. Also still within a margin of error. With Superposition at 1440p, this one's kind of flipped on its head a bit. While in the last test, we saw a small loss with Superposition, we see a massive gain here with almost an 80 frame per second on average gain. 
That's huge. <laughs> That's really huge. We ran this test a whole bunch of times just to verify and that's what we came out with. Remember though, the RTX 4090 launch drivers in Linux were all over the place, they were a complete mess. Lastly, in Horizon Zero Dawn at 1440p in Linux, we're seeing almost exactly what we saw with 1080p in Linux with that performance jump being absolutely huge. But let's move on to 4K in Windows. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider in Windows at 4K, we pick up an average of around about five frames per second which is the trend that we saw from other resolutions. With superposition at 4K optimizer windows, we lost around two frames per second on average, but again, that's still within a margin of error, so you can call that a win or a loss, or it's the same. Lastly, onto Horizon Zero Dawn at 4K in windows, we're seeing what we saw with other resolutions as well. We lost a bit of performance here, however, the difference is not as large as the losses that we saw with 1080p and 1440p. Finally onto 4K in Linux, in Shadow of the Tomb Raider in Linux at 4K, we lost about eight frames per second on average. Nothing too surprising here. With superposition at 4K optimized in Linux, we picked up around 22 frames per second on average. That's quite a significant difference at 4K. Lastly onto Horizon Zero Dawn at 4K in Linux, we picked up around 10 frames per second on average, and this is similar to the gains that we saw in other resolutions in Linux, but nothing too surprising here. However, the difference here is kind of large, but okay. This is where the video gets interesting. As mentioned earlier in the video, Cyberpunk 2077 2.0 just released, and I wanted to compare the differences between what we tested with the 4090's launch, then compared to version 1.63 that I tested yesterday to today, where we tested 2.0, and we did this in both Windows and Linux. Let's start off with Linux this time, as there's less data since a lot of the DLSS features don't work in Linux. All the GPUs are tested at the high preset with no ray tracing and using AMD's FSR 2.1 because FSR is supported on every GPU regardless of who makes it. That's why we do it this way. Also be aware that at the launch of the 4090, the Linux drivers were an absolute steaming mess. That's kind of the point of this video as well. Here's where the fun starts. At 1080p in Linux, the original result of 146 frames per second was absolutely decimated by the 1.63 update that we tested yesterday, with it picking up a lot of performance. Remember, 1080p is still quite CPU bound, which is why we're seeing this. The 2.0 update opened that up a lot more with it being almost 100 frames per second on average faster. That shows you what new drivers and optimizations can do for any game. However, be aware that Linux is a completely different beast. On the flip side of that, this is kind of what drivers can do to destroy performance as well. Because with the 1.63 update at 1440p in Linux, the performance is quite a bit lower than our launch testing results. However, after the 2.0 update, the performance came back with the difference being over 40 frames per second on average higher with 2.0 as compared to the 4090's launch. So very, very interesting result. Remember, we test this multiple times just to make sure we know what's going on here and that's what we found. We also see the same being somewhat echoed here in 4K with Linux. With the 1.63 update in Linux, we lose a bit of performance, but we gain it back with the 2.0 update. Overall, the Linux results are pretty interesting. The Windows results are a proper self-comparison though, because the parameters for the Windows testing, although they're similar to Linux, we can show a mix of DLSS 3.0 and DLSS 3.5. We're also showing the high settings preset with no ray tracing with FSR 2.1, just to add in here for a bit of context to show what the uplift is between the game versions as well. But let's start off with 1080p. We had the beta channel at launch for this game in Steam and the performance was a bit of a mess with that as well. With the 1.63 update, we picked up quite a bit of performance, but we lose it with the 2.0 update with FSR. That's only telling half of the story though. This is where it gets more interesting. At launch, we also tested with DLSS 3.0 on that beta channel with maxed out settings and DLSS set to performance mode with frame generation on. We only tested 2.0 here because we didn't test 1.63 with these settings. I'll explain why. Basically because we wanted to test launch first now. Okay, 
With DLSS 3.5 set with the same settings as compared to the launch testing, we lost about five frames per second on average. And with ray reconstruction on, we only lost a subsequent single frame. We're very CPU bound too, so that would explain all of those numbers being quite close. When we move on to 1440p with the launch testing compared to 1.63 with FSR, we pick up quite a bit of performance, but with the 2.0 update, we lose almost all of the performance that we picked up between updates. This is really no surprise here, and this is a bit of a pattern that we're gonna see because we're a little bit more CPU bound at this point still with 1440p and the 1490. But here's where we see something interesting start to form. When the 4090 can really stretch its legs between DLSS 3.0 and 3.5, we see a big jump in performance with ray reconstruction. We do lose a little bit of that performance, but at the same time, two frames per second higher than DLSS 3.0 with the same settings. I hope that makes sense. Hope you guys are following along. Lastly onto 4K is where the 4090 really shines and where it really gets to stretch its legs. The performance with FSR was impressive on its own. With the 1.63 update, the 4090 picked up around 14 frames per second on average, and the 2.0 update picked up around 28 frames per second on average. This is a significant improvement at 4K. With DLSS 3.0 with frame generation as compared to 3.5, we see another significant improvement in performance with it picking up around 16 frames per second on average. With ray reconstruction, we lost a little bit of performance, but at the end of the day, that's the nature of the beast. With all these new technologies, we're bound to lose a little bit of performance. I think those are some pretty interesting results overall with all the testing that we did here. I think it's pretty interesting to revisit a GPU around a year after it launched to see what the differences are with performance and what the differences would be. We're lucky enough to have the exact same test bench, which in some ways makes this a pretty fair comparison. The results I found here may be different from what other channels and outlets may have found and recorded, but at the end of the day, all I'm doing is sharing the numbers that we found when we tested our things. Yeah, everyone tests differently. That's just how it is. If you found this type of revisit interesting, let me know and let me know if you want to see me revisit any other GPUs, especially if it's some obscure GPU that we've got sitting here. Let us know in the comments. We also did something kind of similar with the Radeon 7 not too long ago. Check out that video too. There's a link to that one down there in the description. If you like this video, ladies and gents, please do me the absolute honor of hitting that subscribe button while you're down there. Hit the like button. If you like the music you heard here, I make all the music. You can click the join button to get that. And if you didn't like the video, whatever. What can I do about that? Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seeking. I've been planning this video for quite a while. The thing is with this video, I was gonna do it on the day to the day of the 4090 launching. But with Cyberpunk 2077 2.0 coming out, I was like, you know what? This is probably a better time to do this. And I'd already started testing yesterday anyway for this video. And then I was like, oh wait, 2.0 is coming out anyway. So we might as well throw that in there for you guys. So hope you enjoyed it. And thanks so very much for watching. Catch you next time.